the Post Gloves here, and today is another video on how to make your first song in FL12. And now you know about plugins, at least some idea about, about most of what they do, and you know about all the parts and general workflow. So all that's really left is, uh, and you know about mixing, and you know what mastering is. Mixing is the idea of creating a sonic space. Mastering is you take an entire track and you essentially apply your final effects to that. I don't think I've made that very clear. Mastering is when you've made your mix and generally you want your mix to be soft because you're going to pump it up in your mastering process. Um, but again, there's like philosophy about that. And so your master is you have one track, one audio file, and you're applying effects to that subtly to sort of make it pop, polish it up and make it ready for everyone to listen to on the radio and stuff. So you can get famous and make a million dollars and come over to my house and make a track. So, so you can get famous, and make a million dollars and buy every plugin on the planet. So let's talk about uh, composition now. So now that we're all set, let's just make a song. Like let's see this thing in action, you know? So I'm just gonna make a generic, something i'm not sure exactly what i make yet i know i'm supposed to have a goal and my goal is to make a song uh for that will demonstrate various techniques so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna replace this kick not that i don't love this kick i just i uh, don't really love this kick so i'm gonna come over here and i have kicks that i like oh you know what let's go into the packs that they added because everyone should have these And what am I listening for? I like my kicks to sound Oh man, I just don't know. See this one has distortion on it. I bet that this was clipped when they recorded it, which isn't a bad thing. Um but you can definitely tell. What the heck? We'll go with this one. And we'll put a 4-4 four, four pattern down. Let's change this to 120 beats per minute. I'm a dance guy. I like making dance music. Let's make it to 128. That's like dance tempo for me. Typical dance tempo. And the way I do it is there's this... Uh, so on this timeline thing, you can right-click to add to add things. If you hit, I believe it's Control T. No, Alt T. Okay, you hit Alt T and it has a marker. You can make markers like time markers, repeat markers, things like that. I don't use repeat markers. Like, at least I haven't yet. But I like to. I'll do this for the sake of tutorialism. We're gonna have an intro. Actually, you know what? We're gonna rename it. So once you put one up, you can add them just by right clicking. But it's a. Uh, I forgot if it was Alt T or Control T. It's one of those. Um, we're going to name this sub intro. So usually there's some sort of sub intro. Then there's like a real intro. Then there's like some sort of a, a jam. And that can go on for like another, it's like, so this is eight bars. Oh, holy crap. These are, <laughs> I was under the impression that this was eight bars for some reason. All right, this is eight bars. Then that goes on for eight bars. And then let's have this go on for another eight bars. And the, this could be the riser as well, but usually there's like a riser somewhere around this section and then a drop. And usually these things happen you you just start adding things little by little and uh but we have our kick and so let's lay down our kick oh pattern five what the heck nah so if, so i'm pushing just pushing buttons now because i'm assuming you kind of know what's going on i'll try and remember if i didn't explain something in the series to point it out but you should be able to from watching the previous videos know what i'm doing that's why i made them so we have our kick and I want this kick to be short. I will name it. 
we'll rename it the intro kick. I'm just making stuff up as we go along. So we have our intro kick and we want it to be shorter as we are making it. And we want some other stuff. I'm gonna stick away from drum loops for now, just cause. So here we go. We'll add one of these things on the upbeats. So we're making our sub intro and we'll just make it a typical drum loop because I'm not going to be my usual self. Now our kick and our, our hi-hat are on the same pattern. That's This is the way I roll. I just toss everything on the same channel because I can. Okay, I just, uh, for my workflow style, I generally have a lot of things on one channel. I'm not one of those guys that goes, this is only my kicks, this is only my hats, and this is my only, like I just, I'm just not one of those. I'll do it sometimes, but it's rare. So I'm gonna EQ my kick. So as you see, I put it in a mixer track and I just added an EQ. I'm gonna listen to it. And the uh, the comma on your, it's the comma, which one is it? The, yeah, the comma on your keyboard is actually middle C. So you can preview percussive sounds there. And I just don't, I want this low and free for other stuff, so. And so once, so we get going, right? And this is like, yeah, this is a good intro. Ooh, kind of sounds good, upbeat. And then right here, we might say we want a moment to happen. Well, you can click up here, make unique. Base, it makes this basically unique. It sets it on a different pattern. So we can make sure we're on pattern two, which I did by making it unique. And we can add a little thing. And down the line we go. And we could make this more interesting by going to channel or insert track two and adding a delay. So you see, we've got this delay going on, but we don't want the delay to come on and off like that all the time. And not, especially not in our intro. So we'll just see right there, maybe in our intro. I'm usually someone that likes to pack in a hundred million things and it gets way too complicated and then it doesn't flow anymore. So I'm trying to stay simplistic right now. Um, but we're gonna turn, we're gonna automate the effect it has on our sound. So we're gonna turn this off and we're going to have it off and we're gonna turn it on right here and fade it out. That'll sound kind of cool. And we'll give it something like that. Just creating some variation for our stuff. Go like that and that. And we'll fade it out like so. And let's hear what that sounds like. Now we have a much more complicated rhythm with kind of rolly dynamics. Things start off loud and get softer and things more interesting to listen to. And so we should probably add in some sort of a synthesizer line. Uh, so we will do so. Let us go to harmless. And let's make it turn on the pluck. Now this is synth design. Okay, I'm gonna leave you in the dust here because there's just way too much to say. And I have tutorials on how a lot of stuff works. But you come up with a synth line you like, and let's say that's the sound you like. I didn't do too much there. Just turn the pluck on and mess with the frequency and resonance. And I hit Control L to send it to a mixer track. And I'm gonna add reverb, which they actually have reverb built in, but we're gonna use the plugins here. Now the decay controls how long the reverb is. So we don't want that very long. Wet and dry is like how much of the original signal goes in and how much of the not original, how much of the process comes out. So if we do it only reverb, you get something like that. Um, so let's just leave it there because, yes. And let's put this on our own. We'll name it synth 
and let's do something like this. And you need some sort of an idea, okay? And my go-to idea is just arpeggiators. That's just what I do. But we could, we I, I'm thinking of something repeating because I'm going to make some sort of a trance song or something, right? So I'm going to make a minor chord. And so we'll go from C minor to G minor. And we'll maybe do some offbeat stuff. This offbeat stuff is cool. Dun 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 dun. This is like ear training stuff. A major, F major. I happen, this is a chord progression, so. And then we'll do, uh, and then the, f we'll do B flat or A sharp major. Let's see, how do I have it set up over here? Okay. And like so. And then we'll go to E because, uh, oh no, G. Uh, which would be G minor. So we'll make that a G. All right. If you don't know music theory, I have a tutorial series on that. And boom, we have our sort of riff thing that we made in Harmless. Super cool. So how are we going to introduce that dynamically into our song? Well, there's a number of ways we could do this. Um, but I think we're going to do something cool. So we're going to put it in like this, a whole bunch. And we're going to start this off, though. It's going through our track five, okay? And it has a filter built in. But these filters behave differently than the filters, the Fruity Free filter which you should have added in our last one. So I can explain how to add it. We've got our fruity free filter and we're gonna start it off uh, as a high pass. So set it to high pass, it's a type of filter and we're gonna automate the frequency sweep. What's going on here? So we have it starting right here and we don't want it to be super loud. So we're gonna make the filter you can see, we're gonna cre create automation clip given we've selected our area. And you see you can't hear anything because the filter's on. We're going to slowly turn it off. But we're also going to do something else here. So right now. So we've got something kind of jiving right now. It's kind of cool. But we can get even better. Uh, or not necessarily better, but it'll be interesting. We can automate our dry. Then we can automate our wet and we'll create similar things to what's right here because when we reach this spot, we want it to be normal. And we're going to take the dry level and turn it all the way down and have it fade in. So it'll, And then we're going to take the wet level and turn it all the way up. So we should essentially have some sort of an echoey thing come in. And that's pretty nice. So we got our, our real intro coming in. So we've created a sub intro. We have a real intro. And it flows. And now here we may want to consider doing things like the delay bank move, automating that on and off to create dynamic delay moves to make our melody more interesting. Instead of doing that, we're gonna do it internally and harmless because it can do that. Uh, we're gonna move our filter around 
this guy. So I just hit an automate that and we're going to automate him up and down just to create movement, make it more interesting. We're going to take our pluck and automate that. And this isn't necessarily complicated. We just want to create some interesting types of movement here. So I'm just creating something so that it's like, whoa, it's like going on here. And we're also going to turn on our delay, turn it on to classic and we're going to take our volume and automate that. I'm just going to do something like this. I think that would be a cool thing to do. As you see, just by moving all those parameters around, we get a really cool sounding thing. And our jam right here is going to be our riser. I have decided we're going to rename it the riser. And we're going to get rid of our first riser. And we're going to put our drop right here. Now, I'm not going for dubstep drop. I'm going for like the moment where everyone just starts going. So this is going to be where the space hits. So we're going to let our drums drop out right there. And we should add in some sort of, I'm picturing this atmospheric kind of second voice that's long and wispy. So let's add a, one of those. <laughs> So it starts out kind of like this ambiguous idea and then away we go. So let's add another harmless because we're harmless buddies. And oh, let's just dig through presets. See, and that sounds pretty cool. That's uh, pretty much what we want. So we, we kind of want to see, this is my workflow anyways. I want to see the chords I'm using without having to think too hard about the progression. Like I already know it's like C minor, G minor, F major, something like that. So I'm just going to clone this. I'm going to right click and clone. So I'm on a new pattern, but I'll see the ghost notes from this guy. So after I've created the part, I'm just going to delete him. So go to piano roll. There's the part. And I like having things bleed over and change. And I'm essentially just covering this stuff. I don't want bass yet. I don't want to introduce my bass quite yet because I'm going to introduce the bass. Um, at the drop. It'll be much more dynamic that way. So now I can get rid of harmless, uh, this one. So I kick cut, I right click and click cut and we should have something like this. As you can see, our preset maybe wasn't the best choice. Um, and now let's move this up an octave. It's got this background bass thing. And let's take a look at what they have exactly going on here. We have a phaser pretty heavily. Uh, we have a flanger. Let's turn the flanger off. Turn the phaser off. The phasers, uh, I mean the flangers, probably what was responsible for a lot of that weird stuff. Our LFO is on. That's kind of cool. And we've got this super long delay. Where is the delay on this thing? Decay. Release. No. Oh, it's the reverb. Oh, of course it is. It would be the time knob. Turn the release down. I don't know. As you can see, it's just a matter of messing with stuff. But let's see what it sounds like now. It's definitely the flanger is messing with it. And now let's add a sweep, like a You know what I'm saying? So in order to do that, let's go in here and let's go to citrus so we have citrus open and we want a sweep type deal how do you do that well uh let's go to default hmm there is no noise oscillator in citrus and i want to stay within fo studios so to add noise we're going to make our own so we're going to go to out 
And we're going to turn this down because it's going to get kind of obnoxious. And we're going to go to the additive section of citrus. And we are going to go to... Oh, there's a way to convert sine harmonics. I know there is. Or not convert to uh, randomize. Oh, here we go. Randomize phases. And we're just going to do something like that. What am I doing? I'm adding a bunch of harmonics and trying to basically simulate noise. Oops. Hey, you know, it's got a sort of a pitch, but I'm not. It could be cool as a noise sound. It doesn't necessarily need to sound exactly like noise. Okay, and in Citrus, you can link things to these controls up here, which is what we're going to do. I just FM'd it, which also will, will just screwed up plenty for us. So we have effectively noise. I'm going to make it really echoey. And from this great echoey sound, we are going to now filter it, uh, which can be done through the filters internally, but we're just going to keep things simple and use the, actually, you know what, let's use the EQ2 because I want to just show you some things about it. You can right click and go to type and now we can make it a high pass or a low pass or a band pass, all these different types of filters and you can see exactly what they do. So this is how it behaves. Now, this isn't exactly how all of them behave. Like there's different ones. And you can change the steepness of it. So that's the order. So we can make it a steep six, make it steeper. And now we can automate this guy using this knob right here. And it will create a cool sound. And we're gonna start our riser right here. So let's make our noise. Uh, make sure you're on a separate channel, a separate pattern too. Okay, so we have our noise, and we're going to route it. Oh, crap. I just realized this only records up to a half hour. I need to change it to forever. I hope I caught that in time. Okay, so we have our noise, and let's go to the mixer, EQ, Number seven, and automate that knob. Man, I had this dream last night. Harry Potter was in it. It was a freaking cool dream. And so right now, our thing starts out at the bottom, moves up. So we want it to do the opposite. No, we want it to do exactly that. Just kidding, because as it comes over, it'll release more and more noise, and we'll hear it. As you see, that's pretty cool. And we need an impact now. This is how to make an impact 101. So first, we need a kick of some kind. It's like the most basic impact ever, but hey, it works wonders. Whatever, kick 30 will do. Then you need to go into your piano roll. Whoops, oh, make a new pattern, call it impact. What the heck? We'll be all cool and name our stuff. So we'll also rename our kick so we don't get confused. We're going to rename that impact and piano roll. And we'll make it low. And I'll have one at normal. And one super low. I'm just, this may change later. Send it to a mixture track, control L, and go to the EQ, hit play, OK. Or just boost it. Okay, whatever that'll do. 
add a crap ton of reverb to that sucker just just drench it man turn the decay up so that it decays out over time and then whoops hit control z and then boom here we go All right, so we have our rise and impact. This is our drop, though. This is where people are going to sort of just start, you know, swaying in place or doing whatever they do when they're on drugs. So let's add. So this is our intro kick. So now we need a not an intro kick. And we, I want it to be the same kick. So we're going to clone this kick. And we're going to rename it our drop kick. No pun intended. And... We are going to completely take the out off of it and send it through an entirely separate mixer track by hitting Control L. So now it's going through track eight, track track, track eight, and we're gonna we're gonna beef it up with a EQ. And on this pattern, oh, get your own get a new pattern for this and name it Drop Kick. Drop Kick to the face and. Go fill each four so it's every beat. And add this guy in. And now I can tell you right now, it's it's sound it'll sound kind of nice, but we want to EQ it and make it sound like really big. Maybe take the low end down a bit. And we're gonna change, we're gonna compress it because uh, we can't. Okay, that's why. And whoops, so this is basically changing the volume spectrally. So this is the mids. These are the lows, and these are the highs. And it sort of crunches those different bands together, brings them up. This is essentially zero decibels, and it's bringing that volume up. This could be very bad if we have a lot of elements going on. But uh, right now, uh, I don't care. So we have our synthesizers too, and they're going into, or this one is, this one's not. Let's send it into something, and we're gonna rename it just so we don't have this weird name. Rename it Atmos, and we're gonna hit Control L, and we're gonna send our drop kick. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a bit of mixing. So right now as it stands, It's okay, but uh, actually it's really okay because there's not that much going on, but we're gonna add bass. So let's add bass real fast. Um, so go to a new one, add bass patterns, and we're probably gonna add like some sort of flute thing on it as well, because I like the idea of like a mysterious flute on top. So I'm gonna use Harmer for this. Uh, and this is super easy. You just turn the sub on and you turn the crude low pass all the way to the left, all the way off. And it's basically a sub bass. And so now we can go in. Aw, oh, man. I forgot what notes are. This is one reason why. We're going to want to use a C, A sharp, A, A sharp. No, we're going to even use a, it goes C minor. A, oh, G, C, G, F, A sharp, G, C, G, F, A sharp, G. Whoops. So let's go in here. C, G, F, A sharp, G. Oh, where's my noise, man? Oh, they're too high. That's all it is, C6. All right. See, 
now our base though and our kick are competing for the same territory when it comes to spectral content. They both want that low end. So we're going to fix that. We're going to come in here. We're going to go to insert 10 and rename it and color it. Rename it side chain. Um, so you can be real particular with this or you can do what I'm going to do right now. Uh, if you want a real specific mix, I don't recommend doing this. But this will demonstrate the principle of side chaining. So side chaining is when whenever the kick hits, we want all this other stuff to sort of just be quiet. So we're going to take our drop kick and right click the arrow and we're going to click side chain to this track. So the kick goes out to the master, but the signal from the kick goes into the side chain. Okay. On our side chain, we're going to add a limiter, which also doubles as a side chain unit. So we're not going to touch anything about the limiter. We're going to go to the compressor, side chain, and set the side chain to the drop kick. Um, so now when the kick plays, we should see the drop kick. Oh, we need audio running through it though as well. So we have various things playing right now. We're going to route everything, all the synthesizers running through there, especially the bass. So let us rename our bass down here, the bass. And we're going to send that through. So we're going to go right click, route to this side chain to the, no, what am I saying? Route to this track only. If we don't do that, it'll get sent out the master and you'll hear it. Uh, without being side chained you actually double the sound which would be bad and so you want to route harmless atmos and bass into the side chain because those are the things making our noises right now and so when the kick plays so first let's just watch so you'll see all the audio from our three synthesizers coming through there it is and in order to have the kick tell these things to you know be quiet so we'll name it drop kick you set a threshold and you turn the ratio basically how much how hard you want it to turn it down and so whenever the volume gets through here and the kick comes it'll be pushed below this threshold um, and basically that's what it does and there's the kick see our kick comes all the way up here so whenever uh so yeah anyways i hope i explained that right or in a way that you could understand now our kick pops right through the bass too you also notice that so yeah oh we have this delay at the beginning this is because we mess with delay over here um as far as why if it's off right here it turns on right here i have no idea and it's off on the other end of our clip. So I still don't know why. Here's how you fix it though. You clone your delay bank and you just make sure that a section of it where it's at zero is on. That way it starts off off and it will fix the problem. And we have our intro kick with our synthesizer coming in. We have our cool automation effects. We could put in some more effects here to make the transition smoother. pretty much it i mean we've got a song and if you apply so this i made a sort of trancey house type deal i think i'd call it more house and trance um you get i mean you get a girl singing on that and you're solid dude you're gonna be a billionaire so uh we could save this so we're gonna hit Control shift s because i don't want to override my shooting template and uh we'll name it girl in a garden 
It's just inspiration. If I, I threw vocals on this, it'd be a girl in a garden. And so we have a drop. Maybe I will finish this song. I kind of like where it's going. Uh, kind of chill. I'm not usually one to be that chill. And so we have a drop. Drop will probably go just to cover the rest of the song. Drop will go till about probably here. Uh, and drop. And uh, generally about 32 16 32 is a really long time you don't want to bore the people some whoops some people are all about atmosphere and creating atmosphere so 32 might be appropriate for this particular kind of a thing but usually you want to create interesting movement that'll keep someone you know engaged that's the number one complaint i have when i'm listening to someone else's stuff it's just so freaking repetitive like i don't know i don't feel like they were creative when they made it Unless, uh, unless it's something where it establishes an atmosphere, then I then I appreciate it. But if it's something that they just were lazy and it's it's weird. It's like when you're composing, people want an easy way out, but then they also want to do it for and be appreciated as an artist and stuff. It's real. I don't know. It's weird how people are excited and active yet lazy about doing things. Because I know the I know the feeling because I want to put things down a hundred million times like this all the time, but. Um, if I were to make this final track, I'd probably add a lot more, a lot more textures and a lot more sounds and layers. Um, because like right now what we've done is great, but I, you know, it's not totally compelling to the ear, uh, but it establishes a vibe. So that could be valuable. I know artistic opinions. So we have our sub intro, our real intro. Those are both eight bars, our riser, another eight bars, which isn't like the most dramatic riser. It's kind of the point though, just the name of a section. And then we have our drop drop will probably go for 16 to 32 bars or at the end of our drop we'll have some sort of a bridge which will go for another eight bars so i guess we'll rename that bridge at the bridge we'll have add marker we could have verse one verse one probably happened during the drop we could rename the drop verse one if you wanted so this would be verse two It'd be another 16 bars and then we'd have some sort of an outro where we'd thin things out until all we were left with is basically a kick. At least that's the way I envision it right now. And then poof, I could just end in space. And the DJ would pull up the next track and away we'd go. So uh, that's that. This is now you've made your first song in FO Studios. Like you know the essential workflow. We've made automation clips, added synthesizers, and even done a bit of mixing. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to uh, start focusing on other tutorials now and doing other things, uh, but I'm always willing to come back and make things more. That's something else I, I've decided I want to do because I've seen tutorials that uh, were good concepts, and if the person would just make a second one, I bet they could do a lot better. So I figure I better take that piece of advice to heart. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, share it with someone you think would appreciate it and these sort of methods. Um, yeah, and have a blessed day.